Good afternoon, class. Before we begin, let us start with a prayer. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen and Amen. So class, good afternoon. So today, we will be discussing once again concepts and principles regarding medical ethics, okay, as collected and um, pronounced by the World Medical Association through their Medical Ethics Manual. So for purposes of reference, the manual and other notes I have uploaded it in the files, okay? So please check it out. So last time class, we discussed um, chapter one, principal features of medical ethics, okay? And we'll skip chapter two. We'll discuss this ne next time. Chapter two is all about physicians and Patients. So today we will be discussing chapter three physicians and society. So within the course of our lecture, we, we will be discussing the different objectives okay, of this course of this um, chapter. And then we will present a case study where you can apply all your learnings within the course of this activity. Next, what is special about physician-society relationship? Another topic is all about dual loyalty. Next, but not the least, resource allocation. Okay, um, for example, here in the Philippines, um, due to the pandemic, um, allocation of uh, the medicine for COVID-19 is not that very high, especially to far-flung areas, okay? Another topic, public health and then global health, and then physicians and the environment. Then, of course, brainstorming of the case study. Application of your learnings. So, without further ado, let's go to page 64. Okay, chapter three, physicians and society. So the objective of this lecture for today class is for the students to recognize conflicts between the physician's obligations to patients and to society and identify the reasons for said conflict. Next objective is to identify and deal with the ethical issues involved in allocating scarce medical 
resources. Okay, especially um, right now we are in still in the pandemic stage. I think there's a new variant, Delta Cron. Am I correct? Next is to recognize physician responsibilities for public and global health. Okay, so more often than not, class, I mean, um, the topic mostly is related to the implication of the role of the physician in the society as a whole, not just in the community, but in the international arena, okay? The global healthcare system, okay? So before we begin, I will give you a scenario, a case study, and we will answer this case study at the end of the lecture. So Dr. S is becoming increasingly frustrated with patients who come to either before or after consulting another health practitioner for the same ailment. She considers this to be a waste of health resources as well as counterproductive for the health of the patients. She decides to tell these patients that she will no longer treat them if they continue to see other practitioners for the same ailment. She intends to approach her National Medical Association to lobby the government prevent this form of misallocation of healthcare resources. So that's this that's this scenario class. So let's begin our discussion. Okay, we will have a brainstorming at the end of this lecture. So what's special about physician society relationship? Okay, the role of a physician in the community, in the public health system, in the global health care system, okay, and so on and so forth. First and foremost, medicine is a profession, okay? Medicine, the practice of medicine, being a doctor, being a physician, okay, it is a noble profession. The term profession has two distinct, although closely related, meanings. First, it is an occupation. Okay, so when you say occupation class, it means that it is a source of income, is a livelihood that is characterized by dedication to the well being of others, high moral standards, a body of knowledge and skills, and a high level of autonomy okay or freedom because in a healthcare system class example in a hospital hospital setting the doctor is part of a healthcare team okay he is the leader you are the leader the healthcare team the healthcare team is composed of different allied medical professionals Okay, these are nurses, medical aides, um, therapists, respiratory therapists, okay, and so on, pathologists, and so on and so forth, class, depending on the need of the client. All the individuals who practice that occupation, the medical profession can mean either the practice of medicine or physicians in general okay so when the profession is a broad term class it's either it, it is your, the practice of your calling your vocation okay it is some refer to it as an art some as as a livelihood okay but um generally um this revolves around the practice of medicine of a physician. So medical professionalism in involves not just relationship between a physician and a patient, but um, 
it also includes relationship with your colleagues and other healthcare professional, okay? Allied healthcare professionals, which will be treated in chapter four, okay, in the succeeding chapters. It also involves a relationship with society. So this relationship can be characterized as a social contract. By the way, class, under the law, the practice of medicine is imbued with public interest. And when you say imbued with public interest, um, the public, okay, must participate in the practice of medicine, okay? So when you say they participate, it means that they have a say, okay, in your practice, for example, class, um, in the case of a malpractice, you committed a an infraction, okay, medical negligence. So, of course, if you committed an infraction, automatically that the three pronged liability of the physician attaches. So, what are these? First is the administrative liability. So, either your license to to practice will be suspended, revoked, okay? Um, next, criminal liability, okay? You will be imprisoned, especially when the patient dies. Lastly, civil liability where you will be able to pay the patient in a form of damages, okay? Monetary obligations, for example, the death of the patient, um, actual damages is 5 million because the patient is the breadwinner of the family. Okay, so it created an economic loss to the family in the amount of 5 million. Another form of damages, moral damages, the death, your, your, your malpractice has caused sleepless nights, wounded feelings, social humiliation, severe anxiety to the kids or to the family members. So again, in order to compensate the sleepless nights, you will, for, you will pay moral damages in the amount of 10 million. Okay? So there are many types of damages class depending on the situation. Okay? So these are just matters of reading class. Medicine is today more than ever before a social rather than a strictly individual activity. Earlier class, um, I discussed the relationship between patients and doctors, okay? Their relationship is governed um, by in a fiduciary character. When you say fiduciary, it means that it is based on trust and confidence. So this fiduciary relationship is protected by law. So if you breach this relationship, it means that any information divulged to you, you cannot just divulge it to third parties. You are the doctor, okay? So this is protected by law, especially right now that we have a data privacy law. And even before, before the advent of the data privacy, it's already protected. It is a privileged communication. So if you divulge, then of course, the three-pronged liability again will attach. Okay? So if you are doctors, don't think so much that you are invisible invincible okay untouchable because the prosecuting arm of the law is always there it will reach you it will tear you okay so be careful always be cautious okay so these are just matters of reading class so the doctrines in this topic are also enshrined in the Declaration of the Rights of the Patients. It simply means that 
whenever legislation, okay, so when you say legislation, um, rulemaking, the rulemaking body, government action or any other administration or institution denies patients' rights. Physicians should pursue appropriate means to assure or to restore them. Physicians are also called upon to play a major role in the allocation of society's scarce healthcare resources. And sometimes they have a duty to prevent patients from accessing services to which they are not entitled. Okay, so physicians class has certain rights and at the same time has certain obligation to your patient and to society. In the same vein, patients have their own rights and at the same time obligation. Okay to the physician. So this relationship class is dynamic. Unlike before, where the, the approach is more traditional, where, where physicians um, takes control of everything, okay? So right now, there is a paradigm shift. Um, relationship between physicians and doctors are now dynamic. So this only, uh, this means that um, even the patients has the right to participate in their treatment regimen, okay? They can decide whether to pursue it or not, or recommend or find second opinion and so on and so forth, okay? Now, let's move on to dual loyalty. When physicians have responsibilities and are accountable, both to their patient and to a third party, and, and when these responsibilities and accountabilities are incompatible, they find themselves in a situation of dual loyalty, okay? But however, class, bear in mind that your priority should be the patient, okay? So this um, scenario is very common if, um, if you are a physician, engage in a business enterprise with pharmaceutical companies. Of course, um, pharmaceutical companies pay physician in order to use their products, okay? However, class, always think what is the best um, interest of your patient, okay? Your, your patient should be the primordial consideration because like what I said earlier, um, being a doctor is a noble profession, okay? It has all the solemnities, all the formalities, okay, given by law, given by the, um, the society, doctor society. So that is why uh, more often than not, physicians or even lawyers um, professionally and some pro pro some professionals think that we are one notch higher than them because of our image and status, okay? But in reality class, all of us are equal, okay? All of us are professionals, okay? Whether you are an engineer, a teacher, a whatever course, you are you are in we are only of equal footing with lawyers and doctors okay so in terms of dual loyalty class your loyalty should be with your patients physicians may in exceptional situation have to place the interests of others above those of the patient okay so these are just in the exceptional Circumstance, for example, um, your patient is terminally ill. He is dying, okay? Example, he is dying of HIV AIDS, okay? So, of course, the, your relationship is governed by fiduciary relationship. And everything your client say to you is protected by law. 
okay, a privileged communication. But however, within the course of your discussion, um, the patient um, says to you, Doc, um, I am dying because I'm infected with HIV with my wife. Okay? And my wife was infected because she had sexual intercourse with our neighbor who is infected. And of course, me being immunocompromised because of my because I'm asthmatic, okay, I have underlying condition. The disease progressed very fast, okay. And then uh, the wife, my wife, and the the neighbor looks healthy, even though they are also carriers. So my plan, though, is to kill both of them, okay. Example. So under the law class, of course. Even though it's a privileged communication, um, as a person, okay, not as a professional, you are duty bound to report any illegal activity or threat that would endanger third parties, okay? So that's the exception here. Physicians may, in exceptional situations, have to place the interest of others above those of the patient. Another class um, exception is when it is provided for by law. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, what does this mean? For example, during the height of the pandemic, where there is a law that that states that if you know someone infected of COVID-19, you should report. Okay, so it is a law. It is a directive, a legal directive to all citizens, okay, including doctors. So you are duty bound to report if you know, if you learn um, someone um, is infected of COVID-19, okay? But uh, as a general rule, all communications are privileged. Okay, so these are just matters of reading. Another um, guidelines where um, do dual loyalty doctrine is enshrined is the resolution on responsibility of physicians in denunciation of acts of torture or cruel or inhumane or degrading treatment of which they are aware. Okay, so they have to report. Okay, physicians should report to the appropriate authorities any unjustified interference in the care of their patients, especially if fundamental human rights are being denied, okay? So this um, declaration, I mean, this principle is also enshrined in the Tokyo Declaration Against Human Torture, okay? And of course, in the Declaration of Helsinki, we, we must never forget where um, human subject, okay, if a certain institution conducts research on human subject, then um, the provisions of the Helsinki Declaration should be uphold, okay, in order to protect these vulnerable um, subjects, human subjects, okay, for example, a medicine being injected to a minor in order to check whether it is effective. So it must comply with the provision of the Helsinki Declaration. So in a way, um, human experimentation class is also a controversial issue for physicians. Okay, so these are just matters of reading class. I will leave this all up to you, okay? Another um, resolution which enshrined the principle is the statement concerning relationship between physicians and commercial enterprises. So this provides guidelines for physicians in such, in such situations and many national medical associations have their own guidelines, okay? So 
this is with respect to business enterprises plus physicians who are working with pharmaceutical companies or um, medical supplies and so on and so forth. Physicians should resolve any conflict between their own interests and those of their patients in their patients favor. OK, always remember the best interest of the patient. The patient being the primordial um, consideration. OK. Next is resource allocation. In every country in the world, including the richest ones, there is an already wide and steadily increasing gap between the needs and desires for healthcare services and the availability, availability of resources to provide these services. This gap requires that existing resources be rationed in some manner. Healthcare rationing or resource allocation as it is more commonly referred to takes place at three levels. OK, so if you are the local leader class, especially when you become doctors, of course, naturally you become a leader. People will look up to you because you have moral ascendancy over um, over the public because you are the medical expert. So as a leader, as, as a doctor, you should bear in mind how to allocate um, medical resources, especially scars medical resources. Classic example class is this pandemic vaccination and even um, medication. Remember the antivirals which were used to treat COVID um, were very expensive. One vial would more or less cost, I think, 80 to 100,000, one vial of anti antiviral and i heard that this this antiviral is used for horses or for animals okay imagine a, a medicine for animals being injected to a person because the doctors believe that it would not cure but lessen or fight the the virus or lessen the symptoms. OK. So as a physician, you should be smart. OK, it is incumbent upon you time and again. I would remind my students to always take note of the three aspects that is within. That, that is within your control. First is the skill. Improve your skill. OK. You watch um, YouTube, you buy um, materials that would help you in your skill. For example, very simple, uh, taking of BP, okay, thermometer, okay. So improve your skill. It is it is important that as doctors you have the basic skills of a competent doctor, and it is with, it is within your control. It is within your initiative. Okay, on how to improve your skill. Another is your knowledge. Okay, improve your knowledge because not um, there is no hard and fast rule in medicine. When you say hard and fast rule, there is no permanent standard. Medicine is always changing. Okay, maybe five years from now, paracetamol, there will be new another medicine. And then paracetamol will be useless. OK, so always have always study. Um, have um, access to seminars, continuing education materials and so on and so forth. Lastly is your attitude. OK, so these three class, your skill, your knowledge and your attitude, you must work with it every day 24 hours a day seven days a week so that when you become doctors you will be you will be a competent doctor okay so how to ration 
scarce resources. There are, cert there are three levels. First, at the highest level, which is the macro level. Governments decides how much of the overall budget should be allocated to health, which healthcare expenses will be provided at no charge, and which will require payment either di directly from patients and or from their medical insurance plans. Within the health budget, how much will go to remuneration for physicians, nurses, and other healthcare workers? to capital and operating expenses for hospitals and other institutions, to research, to education of health professionals, to treatment of specific conditions such as tuberculosis or AIDS, and so on. Okay, so at, at the macro level class, you are the policy maker. Okay, for example, in the Department of Health being the um, the ones who handles public health in the Philippines. So you are part of the government. So who is our Secretary of Health? Duque. Okay. I think he is a doctor. Okay. So in your level, if you are in the government, if you are into public health, you must um, consider many factors, the population, the budget. Okay the number of um, vulnerable population okay many factors to consider in our, in order to ration or allocate these um, medical resources okay classic example again is the pandemic okay the covid-19 where um, before um, densely populated areas uh, the vaccines as high, there are many vaccines in those areas compared to the far flung because they need to control the densely populated area first. Okay, that's why there was lockdowns class. Next is the meso level at the institutional level, which includes hospitals, clinics, healthcare agencies, and etc. Authorities decide which services to provide how much to spend on staff equipment, security, other operating expenses, renovation, expansions, and etc. Okay, so um, more often than not, you are, you are the doctor, you are the administrator of this facility. Like, for example, you are the hospital administrator, and so on and so forth. So it, you are called to allocate certain um, resources once again. Lastly is the micro level, okay, at the individual patient level. Healthcare providers, especially physicians, decide what test should be ordered, okay? This is very important class, especially when your patient is, um, has no money and only relies on the insurance for payment, okay? Abroad class in the States, for example, um, you are sick and the insurance company, you, you are sick, you have no money, and the insurance company will only give three days coverage, okay? So as a doctor, you must perform everything within three days class. You should. Because if these three days will lapse, it will be the patient who will pay, okay? And it would be an injustice class if you, you, you know, um, work in connivance with insurance companies because this is the, this is like a scam, okay, with the doctors and the insurance. So not all class, but it is a common practice. That's why, um, as a doctor, you must be guided by ethics, okay? So decide what tests should be ordered. Um, order only useful tests. Do not um, order many tests just to enrich the hospital so that you can have a higher income. That's not, that's not good, 
that is illegal. Whether a referral to another physician is needed, whether patients should be hospitalized, whether a brand name drug is required rather than a generic one, okay? So, these are ethical considerations class, okay? It has been estimated that physicians are responsible for initiating 80% of healthcare expenditures and despite growing encroachment of managed care, we still have considerable discussion as to which resources their patients will have access, okay? So this is how you approach class um, resource allocation, okay? So some of these discussions class are matters of reading. I will leave this up to you. Physicians are responsible not just for their own patients, but to a certain extent for others as well, okay? So some principles in this topic are enshrined in the Declaration on the Rights of the Patient, which states that in circumstances where a choice must be made between potential patient for a particular treatment that is in a limited supply, all such patients are entitled to a fair selection procedure for that treatment. The choice must be based on medical criteria and made without discrimination. Okay? So there should be a machinery, okay? Everything, everyone should be in equal footing, okay? Um, because like what I said earlier, under the eyes of the law and in the eyes of God, whether you are rich, poor, everyone is equal, okay? So one way that physicians can exercise their responsibility for the allocation of resources is by avoiding wasteful and inefficient practices, even when patients request them. Okay? So like what I said earlier, improve your skill, knowledge, and attitude so that um, it will help your client. Okay? It will help your patient. Okay? So that... Um, what is necessary uh, should be performed because some doctors, they do redundant um, practices just to earn money, earn income, okay? They do many tests because they own the laboratory and so on and so forth, okay? So, Next is we discuss the different approaches in resource allocation. First is libertarian, okay? Resources should be distributed according to market principle. Individual choice conditioned by ability and willingness to pay with limited charity care for the, the statute. Okay, so this approach contemplates that um, the ability to pay of the patient is considered because, of course, um, resources, so these resources, these products also earns income, okay? So if it is given for free, so of course, the stakeholders will react. So one approach is if there is a market, you focus the resources there. That's the libertarian approach. Another is the, is the utilitarian. Resources should be distributed according to the principle of maximum benefit for all. Okay? So to the greatest benefit, um, resources should be allocated in that area. For example, that, like what I said earlier, in Manila, where the densely, where dense population is present, of course, all the tests, okay, COVID test, COVID medicine, COVID vaccine is focused there in order to prevent transmission because of their place, which is congested, okay? So that's the utilitarian approach. Um, resource, resources should be distributed according to the principle of maximum benefit. Another approach is egalitarian. 
resource, resources should be distributed strictly according to need. Okay, so it is self-explanatory. Lastly, last approach is restorative. Resources should be distributed so as to favor historic, historically at disadvantage. Okay, so those people who really needs it, okay, should be prioritized. So these principles, once again, are enshrined in the statement on access to healthcare, which states that no one who needs care should be denied it because of the inability to pay. Okay? So these are just matters of reading. So choice will depend on the physician's own personal morality as well as socio-political environment in which he or she practices. And then physicians have responsibility to advocate for expansion of these resources where they are insufficient to meet patient needs. Okay. So I think class, due to lack of material time, we will end there and next time we will discuss um, public health. Okay. So class, do you have any questions or clarifications? None, Mr. Abdul. So if there is none class, I will end our discussion. I will end the recording. Thank you class. See you next time. Bye. Thank you, attorney. Thank you,